Hey guys, welcome to SAR Trail. I am Jeff and today we are in Salt Lake City, Utah. We made the journey from Denver to Salt Lake to take a look at a couple trailers, some stuff that has been on our radar that we wanted to look out and check out, kind of kick the tires if you will, and see what we think about them. So, up first, well, before up first, sorry, we're next to a busy road and it's really windy today. So hopefully you can hear me. But wanted to show you guys the Borshear XOC trailer. This thing is really cool, has some things we haven't seen before, has some things that we have seen before, done in some really cool ways. So let's jump right in. We're gonna do a walkthrough on this thing and kind of look at everything about it. So let's go up, up front at the tongue and check it out. Okay, so we're gonna have to improvise here a little bit. The wind is so strong, it just blew the tripod over. So I'm gonna switch off and go handheld here in just a second. And wanted to show you the detail on the front of this thing, some of the strengths, and then we're just gonna work our way around. So let me grab this thing by hand and let's take a look. Okay, so right here you can see that there's several boxes on the tongue of the trailer. So in these boxes, you have this first one, this is your electronic controls, your connection to shore power, you can put a solar charge controller up in there, you got room for a couple batteries at least, and all of your controls that run your electric, really a slick setup. I wanted to show you this while it's exposed right now. All of the boxes on this thing have compression latches. So you can see this, it's all about compression, and what you're compressing is this seal around it and the way it's been explained to me is they have had this trailer with these trailers the for sure trailers out on the dustiest trails around Utah where they get that fine little powder like Moab powder all of that and none of the boxes take on any of that dirt they don't take on any of that dust because they are compression latches and they're able to keep everything clean so, super good plus. Um, another thing we have, let's take a look at this box. Right above your battery box, you have another storage up in here. And you can see same concept. This is a big storage up in here. That's a step that goes with it. I'll show you where the step goes here in just a little bit. But same idea, you got strut assist. And then you have a box that comes out. That's probably about maybe 10, 11 inches deep by probably 36 inches long by about 20 inches wide. So good size storage. Also, they told me what a lot of the people do is they will put some solar panels right across the top of that box, give you some more charging. And you can always, of course, put solar on the roof if you wanted to, if you're not running a tent, or if you're doing a hard shell tent, you can do that as well. Okay, so over here, driver's side, this is a through box or a tunnel box stainless steel latches, same compression idea to keep dust out, and there's your, your tunnel box or your through box. Good size, really good size box, room for a lot of storage. You could put a supplemental fridge or freezer up in the front if you wanted to, uh, your portable camp, toilet, chairs, tables, whatever really you wanted to run up there. Another thing I like about the front of it, you have these tree sliders, rock sliders, whatever you want to call them, this protection here, protect your frame, protect the corners of your box, protect your steps there, your diamond plated steps, all of that stuff being protected on both sides, very smart design, galvanized steel frame, aluminum upper on the body, once again really smart design, we got some D shackles over here, both sides of the tongue. Those are purely for recovery. When you think you need to get recovered, good way to hang on, to hook onto your trailer. And up front, we got some, what I would say definitely heavy duty chains, not anything that would be considered small or undersized. Uh, your seven point wiring, your connection, uh, then your brake as well, your emergency brake if you come disconnected, that's a plus as well. And then you got an option up here to put in various different kinds of articulated hitches, or you could do a regular hitch ball and coupler. So let's take a look up top now. 
top is really, really looks nice. So all aluminum roof rack up here, a little bit of an angle for aerodynamics. You can see you got your vent and your fan. Roof rack, you can put gear, kayaks, rooftop tent, solar panels, whatever you want. Standard roof rack, you can put a lot of different things up there depending on your needs. Also has these stake pockets right in here, which you can use. They come up, uh, the stake pockets come up, let me see if I can give you a, an idea. They come up about like this high, maybe 10, 12 inches high, that you can tie gear down to if you're not using the rooftop tent. Or those can also be used to mount your awning on the side. So you can put a couple of those stake pocket aluminum pieces up there and give you a little more height on your awning if you need it. Uh, let's work our way down the side. Let me show you one thing here. We have all LED marker lights. Really nice feature. Everything marker lights. Come around here to the back side of the fender LED marker light there. You can see how they're all wired in. Maybe you can see this one a little bit better. You can see how they're wired in. Everything looks like it's done really well. It's built to last. And that is a really big plus. So let's continue with uh, the lighting. Let's look at the back lighting. Over here, all LED lighting on the rear of the trailer. Another plus, and of course, your marker lights on the other side as well. And then you have your third brake light up at the very top. And that's a good feature. A lot of trailers don't have that. And this day and age, it's a really good thing to have, especially with LED lights. Uh, continuing with the boxes. This is once again driver's side. And here we have, once again, strut assist. Box, compression latches, all stainless steel hardware. And over here you have your on-demand hot water. You can see everything is plumbed and wired in very nicely. Um, and it's color-coded so you can see what's hot and what's cold water. Place where you hook your bottle gas up to. And down here on the fender you have your bottle gas. And that's a 20 pound you can put in there. So that is a full-size propane tank that fits in there. Honestly, you hook that up for a really long time with a full-size tank like that. Um, over here you got a place underneath this box where you can hang some gear right in there and then this box is a really cool concept here as well once again a compression latch nice design fits in with the rest of the body and this is where you put in your shower control right here so you put in one one shower control at the knob that will dial in for hot or cold water and then there you can control right over here at your shower table. So, really sweet idea. Okay, so at the rear of the trailer, you have a storage rack up here. Supports 100 pounds of gear, however you want to bungee it or tie it down on there. But 100 pounds of gear are a great place to throw your max tracks. And we'll come around to this side, passenger side. Over here you have a really smart design for some jerry cans. So right in here you can store two five-gallon jerry cans whether it be water or fuel. Really smart design and latching system, which is real nice and one you can put a lock on. If you want to put a lock right through here, then you can kind of keep that a little bit safer than it would be otherwise. Another really nice feature that I like about this trailer is the ladder that goes to the roof. Honestly, it seems way Overbuilt. And overbuilt is a great thing. It's a, it's a huge thing, honestly. So a really big guy could get up there, climb on that thing, and never worry about it, ever flexing or coming loose. Both sides have a door. This is, once again, passenger side. You can see right on through there to driver's side. And that's your ventilation for inside, plus you have the vent on the top with the fan. And then you got your little LED kind of torch light up here. Both sides have that as well. Always a good thing to have when you're coming to your trailer or getting out at night. Shine a little light down before you step out. Make sure there's nothing crawling on the ground to give you any trouble. Also on the outside, something I really want to show you. I'm going to lay down here on the ground and show it to you. We have the timber and axleless suspension. And I believe this trailer gets about 23 of ground clearance, which is honestly incredible.
incredible amount of ground clearance. And you can see, so it's a Timurin with a lift kit, not just straight up Timurin suspension. That gives you, I think, 17 or 18 inches. This one has a lift kit built into it, so you get a lot of ground clearance. You have a water tank, 30 gallons of water to carry with you down at the bottom of your trailer. Super, super smart idea. Okay, another thing you have on the rear corner are these stabilizers. So these are your stabilizing jacks. You take the pin out, you drop the jack down, and then you can crank this by hand, or honestly what they told me they really recommend people do is bring a cordless drill with them, hook it to here, and just drill this thing and get you level. Okay, so let's go inside, look at the inside, and then we're gonna come back and look at the kitchen galley area and some of the features we have there. So here, you can see double locking door, really nice feature. You got a window, screened window, and you can open up, slide it up, keep the screen on. Another really nice, cool feature. And then coming inside, let me see if we can come out here a little bit. You got a queen size mattress, an actual queen size mattress, not what some people call a almost queen size, but this is a legitimate queen size mattress, eight inches thick mattress. And let's just kind of, you know, you can feel it. Really, it feels like a really nice mattress. You know, some of these trailers will have a four, maybe five inch mattress. Eight inches, I think, is a nice plus to have. Uh, looking back above your head, if you're laying down in, you got reading lamps, some LEDs for both sides of the bed. Straight up above, you got a fan. And there's a couple different options on the fans. You can do the reversible max fan. This one is not that. This one just draws air right on out. But nonetheless, that's up a preference thing, but you gotta have a fan in these things to draw the warm air out and then allow your cooler air to come in through your door windows. Really good plus. Now this one, this company, Vershear, they've gone in the direction of using wood on the interior. A lot of trailers are, companies, a lot of trailer manufacturers are going away from wood and they're using composite or they're using aluminum. Uh, they've done the wood here. It looks really sharp. And then you can also see the control center here. One thing they do offer as an option is an air conditioning unit right there. Air conditioning unit is typically for shore power, but they do say that if you upgrade the battery system, you can get some run time off of your 12 volt as well. I think you're going to eat up a lot of your battery power to run an AC off of that, but Nonetheless, it is an option to take some of the heat off and get you to sleep before it cools down at night. And then you have locking doors. You push the button, pull this thing out, and then you just twist it a little bit. You can see you twist it, and then you get opened up. You got storage, and it's a good amount of storage. I'm going to say we're probably 20 inches squared. It's kind of what it looks like or something pretty close to that, so it's a fair amount of storage. And then you got your drawer in here as well some more good storage in that drawer. It's about as deep and as wide as your cabinet up above. So that's really nice with about five or six inches depth. And everything's locking, which it has to be, or your gear's gonna end up being everywhere. Uh, you can see Pioneer speakers above both doors. And then you got your Pioneer radio as well. And we didn't look at this earlier, but you got a table. so. If you got work to do on your laptop, homeschool the kids while you're on the road, there you go. You got a table that slides out in here. That's a really cool feature. Or if you want to snack while you're laying in bed, breakfast in bed, there you go. You got a little slide out table. Very cool feature. So if you look down here, I'm going to say you can see you got a little drop down there. You got your heat controller over here because this does have a heater on it. I'm gonna show you in the back and you have those two vents back there. Those vents provide you your hot air into your cabin. That way, if you're out somewhere cold, you can control your climate. Really good feature because it's not always hot in the places that we overland. All right, so wanted to get you kind of an idea of how much space you have back here. So I'm gonna say you got 12 inches from the lowest point. 
down around the area of your shins. So 12 inches, and then if you come back, probably where your knees are gonna be, or yeah, probably about where your knees would be, if you're about my height, six foot one, your lowest point, I'm gonna say, is probably 16 inches, and then over here, you're gonna have more like 18 inches on the sides. So that gives you an idea of about where your knees are at, you're gonna have 16 to 18 inches of space. Where your feet are at, you're gonna have about 12 inches of space. And then your headroom up here, there is plenty of room if you wanna sit up in bed. There's just absolutely plenty of room to sit up and you know, change clothes or whatever you might need to do. So you're not gonna feel like you're cramped or claustrophobic in there. Okay, so moving around to the back of the trailer, this is where the kitchen is. And this is always, for me, a sticking point. You know, anybody can make a good interior of a trailer and they can get the suspension, the timbering, because, you know, almost everybody's using the timbering suspension now. Um, a couple people are getting a little bit, uh, a little bit maybe more creative, I wanna say. But the kitchen is where I think a lot of trailers just fail. So, let's see how the Vorshear XOC does in regards to the kitchen. All right, so first thing you're gonna notice is you have the rear swingway spare tire mount. And, and I wanna say this thing is really, really well built. It's gonna be strong enough to hold some extra gear. You wanna throw a trash room on the back or something like that. It's going to hold it without any problem. That is a massive, massive hinge on that thing. And then down below, you can see you have the receiver. So you want to put a bike rack back here. You can put an extension and get your bike out back behind your spare tire and wheel. And you can run bikes back here as well. So another smart design in the back where you have your LED lights. You got this plate right here that protects them, the LED lights from being hit by anything. If you end up, you know, having a little bit of a tough departure angle and you're scraping down here, your LED lights are still going to work and get you home. That's a really big plus. So the Swingway tire carrier, check it out right here. It latches in completely solid. And then you pull that guy down, you unlatch him. And then we got a pin over on the side. I'm going to show you the pin. And then we have several latching points that we can use for this guy. So here's the pin right here. Pull that pin up. And then you can pull that arm out. You can see the holes here where those pins can, where that pin can drop back in. It just depends on where you need it to. So we dropped right there. We're clear of the kitchen. So let's check out the kitchen area. All right, so first things first on the back side of the spare tire arm is a fold down table out here. Really nice design right there. So we've got some prep space. And that is a really, really sweet design. I'm going to fold that back up so I can open up the rear door. I don't know if it clears it or not over hits, so I think we're going to do this in the right order because we don't want to scratch this guy. So once again, base of the door of your rear galley. Once again, a compression lock. Latch right there. And strut assist arm. You just kind of pull it in. It does the rest of the work. So you can see the gas struts right here. There's one on either side. And then now let's fold this table down and see what it looks like. All right, so let's check it out from a distance. So there you go, you've got some covered space. Now, I'll tell you one thing about this trailer, this design. When the rear comes up like this, you don't have place to do a 270 degree on it. It won't work. So what we've seen people do is put an awning on, on either side or a rooftop tent on one side and awning on the other side and then do the rhino rack dome on the back kind of that high point of that rear tailgate and then have the rhino rack dome come out and extend out and give you more shade out here because honestly i'll tell you what one of the deterring things for me for this style of trailer is the fact that you can't do a complete awning wrap around and you don't have a lot of space if you can see where the back of your kitchen is, right at the end of the trailer, and how much shelter you actually get from your rear door. It's not much, you only got a couple feet, so you're standing in there trying to stay out of the sun, or trying to stay out of the rain, and you only have a couple feet, but then you throw in that rhino rack 
dome on him on the back there. And then there you go. I think you're covered pretty well. But it gives you protection from really hard sun uh, or really a lot of rain. And once again, we got Pioneer speakers up here. And we also have LED lighting, very similar to what we have on the inside, very uniform, which is super cool. Another thing we have back here, this is all wood. The cabinet doors, all this is wood in here, everything in here is wood. So there's a lot of wood on this trailer. If you are someone who doesn't want an overlanding trailer with wood, this is not the one for you. But if you're one that appreciates the warmth that you get from wood, it is protected against the elements. So I, what they say is that you're gonna get a really long life out of this wood. It's not gonna be a wood that's gonna start to oxidize and turn and, and whatnot. And you know, in five years be a problem for you. So. That I don't know that much about, but that's how it's been explained to me, so we'll go with it for now. Uh, you can see your area with your fuses, and then you have your power right here from your shore power. So you can run some electronics back here in your kitchen. And then once again, you got more storage down here. Everything slides really well. Nice slides on these shelves, good bearings. Everything latches in place. You don't have to worry about things. So you lock it in, and it's not going anywhere and then you just turn it and then there you go you're back out again so cool design passenger side over here same exact thing uh, your countertop uh, it feels like some kind of a composite not sure exactly what it is but a composite in that gray color looks pretty sweet and then right here you have slide out pantry here to the back side of it and then you come over here canned goods herbs, spices, things like that. Good place for those things. And it slides in real tight. So you can see, you're not gonna have stuff falling out and getting jammed in there, unless it's paper thin. Okay, so then this is going to be our stove, burner, and our sink that comes out of here. Everything you can see, it has these yellow latches on it. Just pop that guy out, and then you come on out. And that gives us the sink. Nice stainless sink, and then you kind of flip up for your on-demand hot and cold water. Very cool setup. Uh, once again, I want to say, I'm going to point it out because we have, you know, water out here in the kitchen. We got a sink here, and this is all wood. For me, I would be careful not to get a lot of water here. Though they have said that it's all treated, the wood's not going to deteriorate or rot. I would still be careful, but that's just me. Uh, coming back out here. We got the other one. Let's pop this guy out. And we have the Parvier Steel dual gas burner. I'm gonna pop that guy open there, Bailey. Pop that guy open. Just lift him on up. Yeah, there you go. Right. Oops. My bad, sorry. Uh, keeping you locked on. There you go. So, dual burner, partner steel. And it's got the. The windscreen's on it. And if you're into overlanding, if you know you've been following this hobby for a long time, you know that this is just about the most highly used dual burner on the market. Partner Steel makes some incredible stuff. And their stuff just lasts forever. So good plus, really nice feature that for sure decided to go with them and use them on their stove. That's really a good product. So then also you get at the end of this island, I'll show you from the side so you can see it really well. So you see, you start off with your sink, then your dual burner, and then you can put your cutlery drawer, uh, other things like that you might want to use out here. So a nice feature, lots of storage, three-tiered slide out over there is a really big plus. And then let's move on over to this. You got this slide out, this is for your fridge. I don't know exactly what size fridge you can do, check it on their website, I'll try to get you the dimensions for it, but it's a large fridge or a fridge freezer combo that's going to go here without question. That is not a small area, so that's going to be probably a 70, maybe 80 that will fit in there. It's not just a 50 liter, but that's going to be a good size fridge. So we'll slide this guy back in. And if you look up here, you have your heater. These are the hoses. 
Let's see if we can get you to see. All right, these are the hoses that feed those two vents that I showed you on the inside. So this is your heater for the interior of your cabin, and it goes off of your propane tank as well. It gives you nice climate control on the interior of your cabin in cold weather, which is really nice to take that chill off or even warm it up to a nice level. I know that heater that they use, that is the uh, Propex, and it is a really, really good heater. Very quiet, you have a tiny little bit of hum. Honestly, inside the cabin, you might not even hear it much at all, other than just the air coming through those vents. All right, I'm gonna stand into the kitchen, kind of show you perspective of what it gets you. Um, perspective, how can I do this? I'm six foot one, six foot four inch wingspan. So come take a look at how this looks. I'm just gonna stand in here, give you kind of some idea of the dimensions of it. Actually, this Moby One is the predecessor of the XOC and its rounder version. So this is just a four-year-old trailer, uh, which honestly looks like it's in really good shape. For it. The trailer's been used for four years out on trails. But you can see that rounded shape. If you like that more traditional shape, if you like that more rugged, slant-back shape, then the XOC is definitely the way to go. This would be my choice. I think it looks really, really sharp. Other than that, the trailers are the same. It's just an aesthetic. Okay, once again, our apologies for the very bad sound out there at the live video of this trailer, but it is what the conditions were. So the rear stabilizers on the trailer are nice. It gives you a chance to stabilize and level your trailer. That's a big plus. 23 inches of ground clearance is enormous. Maybe the most that we've seen on any trailer in this class. Love to see a skid plate on the bottom of that to protect your water tank, at least give it some kind of protection. And I don't know that I love wood on the bottom of your trailer where you're gonna have road spray from rain or snow, you're gonna have mud and dirt plus water crossings. I know it's protected wood, they say it's all sealed, but to me, it would give me a little bit of pause. The interior is really gorgeous and it's the size of a queen size bed and it feels that big or bigger, honestly, it doesn't feel cramped or small, though it may be on the video, it does look a bit small, but it really is a nice layout with some good storage. Once again, it's wood. Don't know that I love that on an overlanding trailer, but it sure is nice to look at. The doors, the cabinets, like I stated before, everything seals up really, really well. Very positive feeling when they close. Your tires, you can certainly fit a bigger tire in there. I'm not sure if this is a 31 or a 33, but you can certainly go up larger on the tires if you wanted to get a little more ground clearance or have a little bit more sidewall to soften your ride on the trail. Those would be a plus as well. Overall, the, the look of the trailer is really nice. It's rugged. It's kind of sleek at the same time. The work that's been done with the aluminum, all the welding, all of that work, is just really, really nice. They certainly have skilled craftsmen in order to do that. I'd love to see them take this trailer and take all the wood off of it and do everything in aluminum and composite that's above the frame, removing everything that could possibly rot out or be damaged by water. I think they could certainly do it. They have the people on staff to do that kind of work when you look at the quality that's being built here. The marker lights are great. They are small, but plenty bright. Um, the body frame protection is really nice. 
And of course, the storage on the tongue is very nice. It's all very well thought out. And then the overall look of it, if you just look at the trailer, it just looks like an overlanding trailer. It looks rugged and it looks tough. And then as you can see, the, the craftsmanship and just the overall finish is really nice. So wanted to thank you guys for checking out this video. We certainly had a fun time spending a couple hours around Hinkley Overland. And thank you for their generosity and letting us spend a lot of time looking at the first year trailer. We will see you next time and have some awesome camping and overlanding adventures for you. Thanks a lot.